Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stabin County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 37, hosted by SSCL librarian, Linda Reimer. This is the Friday, January 8th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers for the week from the New York Times at number one, The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. The first book in the Bridgerton series Daphne Bridgerton's reputation soars when she colludes with the Duke of Hastings. The book is the basis of the new Netflix series, Bridgerton. At number two, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. The lives of twin sisters who run away from a Southern black community at age 16 diverge as one returns and the other takes on a different racial identity, but their fates intertwine. At number three, Hush, Hush by Stuart Woods, the 56th book in the Stone Barrington series. Old friends come to Stone's aid as he takes on an expanding cabal of enemies. At number four, The Invisible Life of A.D. LaRue by V. E. Schwab. A Faustian bargain comes with a curse that affects the adventure A.D. LaRue has across centuries. And rounding out the top five, The Law of Innocence by Michael Connolly, the sixth book in the Mickey Holler series. Holler defends himself when police find the body of a former client in his car's trunk. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week. At number one, a Promised Land by Barack Obama. In the first volume of his presidential memoirs, Barack Obama offers personal reflections on his formative years and pivotal moments through his first term. At number two, Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. The Academy Award-winning actor shares snippets from the diaries he kept over the last 35 years. At number three, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. The activist and public speaker describes her journey of listening to her inner voice. At number four, Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. The Pulitzer Prize winning journalist examines aspects of caste systems across civilizations and reveals a rigid hierarchy in America today. And at number five, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. Our first recommended read for this week is a mystery, Murder, Inc. by Betty Hetchman. Veronica Blackstone is a writer for hire, be it love letters, biographies, resumes, or wedding vows. Veronica has you covered. Her latest assignment is writing a celebration of life book for the funeral of one-time client Rachel Ross, who tragically 
died one year after her wedding. While researching Rachel's life, Veronica finds the information surrounding the circumstances of her death to be shrouded in mystery. No one quite knows what happened, and her prominent family are more concerned with their image than the truth. Was Rachel's life as perfect as it seemed, or was there something dark going on? Was her fall an accident, deliberate, or something else? In celebrating the life of Rachel, Veronica is determined to get to the bottom of her death. This book is the first book of the Writer for Hire mystery series. Moving along to our second recommended read for the week, this is not a new publication, but it is the basis of a new film. The book is titled News of the World, written by Pauline Giles. The novel is indeed the basis of the current major motion picture starring Tom Hanks, and it is also a National Book Award finalist in the fiction category. In the aftermath of the Civil War, an aging itinerant news reader agrees to transport a young captive of the Kiowa back to her people in this exquisitely rendered morally complex, multi-layered novel of historical fiction from the author of Enemy Women that explores the boundaries of family, responsibility, honor, and trust. In the wake of the Civil War, Captain Jefferson Kyle Kidd travels through northern Texas, giving live readings from newspapers to paying audiences hungry for news of the world. An elderly widower who has lived through three wars and fought in two of them, the captain enjoys his rootless, solitary existence. In Wichita Falls, he is offered a $50 gold piece to deliver a young orphan to her relatives in San Antonio. Four years earlier, a band of Kiowa raiders killed Johanna's parents and sister, sparing the little girl that they then raised as one of their own. Recently rescued by the U.S. Army, the 10-year-old has once again been torn away from the only home she knows. Their 400-mile journey south through unsettled territory and unforgiving terrain proves difficult and at times dangerous. Johanna has forgotten the English language, tries to escape at every opportunity, throws away her shoes, and refuses to act civilized. Yet as the miles pass, the two lonely survivors tentatively begin to trust each other, forming a bond that marks the difference between life and death in this treacherous land. Arriving in San Antonio, the reunion is neither happy nor welcome. The captain must hand Joanna over to an aunt and uncle she does not remember, strangers who regard her as an unwanted burden. A respectable man, Captain Kidd is faced with a terrible choice, abandon the girl to her fate, or become in the eyes of the law a kidnapper himself. That's our second recommended read of the week, and I think I'd like to both read that, which I haven't done yet even though the book's been out for a while, and I'd like to watch the movie with Tom Hanks. So you sort of have two recommendations there, the book and the movie. Our first audiobook recommendation of the week is The Pretenders, written by Charlene Harris and performed by an ensemble cast. Charlene Harris, the number one New York Times best-selling author of the Suki Stackhouse novels and the Harper Connolly Mysteries, and New York Times bestselling author Christopher Golden present The Pretenders, 
a graphic audio production, first in a brand new trilogy. She calls herself Kalexa Rose Dunhill, names taken from the grim surroundings where she awoke, bruised and bloody, with no memory of who she is, how she got there, or who left her for dead. She has made the cemetery her home, living in a crypt and avoiding human contact. But Kalexa can't hide from the dead, and because she can see spirits, they can't hide from her. Then one night, Kalexa spies a group of teenagers vandalizing a grave and watches in horror as they commit murder. As the victim's spirit rises from her body, it flows into Kalexa, overwhelming her mind with visions and memories not her own. Now Kalexa must make a decision, continue to hide to protect herself, or come forward to bring justice to the sad spirit who has reached out to her for help. The Pretenders is part one of the Cemetery Girl trilogy series, part two, Inheritance, and part three, Haunted, are also available as Hoopla audiobooks. This particular title is only available through Hoopla. And while I'm talking about Hoopla, I'm going to note that the instant checkout limit per person has just been increased to six items per month. So you can now check out six items from Hoopla on demand. Moving from fantasy to history and biography, we have our second audiobook recommendation for this week. It is Titan. The Life of John D. Rockefeller Sr., written by Ron Chernow and read by Grover Gardner. John D. Rockefeller Sr., history's first billionaire and the patriarch of America's most famous dynasty, is an icon whose true nature has eluded three generations of historians. Now, National Book Award-winning biographer Ron Chernow gives us a detailed and insightful history of the mogul. Titan is the first full-length biography based on unrestricted access to Rockefeller's rich trove of papers. Full of startling revelations, the book indelibly alters our image of this most enigmatic capitalist. Rockefeller was likely the most controversial businessman in our nation's history. Critics charged that his empire was built on unscrupulous tactics, grand scale collusion with the railroads, predatory pricing, industrial espionage, and wholesale bribery of political officials. The Titans spent more than 30 years dodging investigations until Teddy Roosevelt and his trust busters embarked on a marathon crusade to bring Standard Oil to bay. While providing abundant evidence of Rockefeller's misdeeds, Chernow discards the stereotype of the cold-blooded monster to sketch an unforgettably human portrait of a quirky, eccentric, original. A devout Baptist and temperance advocate, Rockefeller gave money more generously than anyone before him. Titan presents a finely nuanced portrait of a fascinating, complex man synthesizing his public and private lives and disclosing numerous family scandals, tragedies, and misfortunes never before revealed. Rockefeller's story captures a pivotal moment in American history, documenting the dramatic post-Civil War shift from small business to the rise of giant corporations that irrevocably transformed the nation. With cameos by Joseph Pulitzer, William Randolph Hearst, Jay Gould, William Vanderbilt, Ida Tarbell, Andrew Carnegie, Carl Jung, 
J.P. Morgan, William James, Henry Clay Frick, Mark Twain, and Will Rogers. And boy, oh boy, did Rockefeller know a lot of people, that's for certain. But I digress, getting back to the book, Titan turns Rockefeller's life into a vivid tapestry of American society in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. If you like history and biographies, this is a great book. If you haven't already read it, and if you're thinking the author's name sounds familiar, that's because he wrote a book more recently that he's much better known for, and that's the biography of Alexander Hamilton that the famous musical is based upon. Moving on to our first streaming recommendation for this week. Our first recommendation is the TV series Bridgerton, which just came out and is available through Netflix. Bridgerton is a historical drama series created by Chris Van Dusen and produced by Shonda Rhimes. It is based on Julia Quinn's novels set in the competitive world of Regency London, high society, and set during the social season when debutantes are presented at court. The drama centers on the Bridgerton family, Violet, Lady Bridgerton, her four sons, Anthony, Benedict, Colin, and Gregory, and her four daughters, Daphne, Eloise, Francesca, and Hyacinth. Also featured are the Featheringtons, Portia, Lady Featherington, her husband the Baron, and their three daughters, Philippa, Prudence, and Penelope. This is the Wikipedia overview because every review I found of Bridgerton, they were all positive, but they were also quite lengthy. So again, if you like history, check this one out. And moving from history to a comedy docu-series, we have our second recommendation. It's called The History of Swear Words. It came out in 2020 and it's available through Netflix now. And it came out just at the end of last year. And of course, I'll preface my little reading of the summary with the obvious tidbit. That is that if you don't like salty language, do not check out this series. If you like salty language or you don't mind it and you're in the mood for a little bit of humor, check out The History of Swear Words. So having said that, let me tell you a little about it. The docu-series, History of Swear Words, features two good gimmicks. The first is the concept itself, a half scholarly, half jokey exploration of profanity with input from academics like the lexographer Corey Stamper and from celebrities like Nick Offerman and Nikki Glaser. The second gimmick is the show's host and narrator, Nicholas Cage, an eccentric and charismatic actor who has never been shy of emphatic swearing on screen. Each episode is short and snappy, mixing genuinely informative commentary with animated interludes and illustrative clips from popular culture. And yes, the first installment covers exactly the word you'd expect it would. And that overview is by Noel Murray for the New York Times. And our third streaming recommendation for this week is a blast from the past suggestion. This is the film Working Girl from 1988, available through Amazon Prime Video. Melanie Griffith shines, Sigourney Weaver snarls, and Harrison Ford shows off his comic chops in this sparkling Wall Street rom-com. And I'm not sure I like the term rom-com. I keep seeing it everywhere. I think I would say in this sparkling Wall Street romance comedy from the director Mike Nichols. Griffith stars as Tess McGill, a secretary who tires of merely daydreaming about corporate success and decides to do something about it when her backstabbing boss, Sigourney Weaver, has a skiing accident and ends up in traction. Kevin Wade's script is reasonably wise to the ways of the boardroom, but the real draw here is the fun 
and flirtatious chemistry of Griffith and Ford, who team up for a big business deal, and perhaps more. Our critic deemed it always fun, even when at its most frivolous. And that overview is by Jason Bailey for the New York Times. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week, it's the brand new fantasy novel by Alexandra Bracken. It's called Lore. From the number one New York Times best-selling author of The Darkest Minds comes a sweepingly ambitious, high-octane tale of power, destiny, love, and redemption. Every seven years, the Aegon begins. As punishment for a past rebellion, nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals. They are hunted by the descendants of ancient bloodlines, all eager to kill a god and seize their divine power and immortality. Long ago, Lord Perseus fled that brutal world, turning her back on the hunt's promises of eternal glory after her family was murdered by a rival line. For years, she's pushed away any thought of revenge against the man, now a god, responsible for their deaths. Yet as the next hunt dawns over New York City, two participants seek her out. Castor, a childhood friend Laura believed to be dead, and Athena, one of the last of the original gods, now gravely wounded. The goddess offers an alliance against her mutual enemy and a way to leave the Aegon behind forever. But Laura's decision to rejoin the hunt, binding her fate to Athena's, will come at a deadly cost, and it may not be enough to stop the rise of a new god with the power to bring humanity to its knees. Boy, oh boy, if you like fantasy novels, that sounds like a great one. I can't wait to read it. And on to our Odd Duck recommendation of the week. And this week, I'm going to talk about computer sound. And I'm going to talk about how you can make your computer sound louder than it is even if you have the sound on your computer set at its highest level. So right about now, you're probably thinking, well, how am I going to do that? By buying and adding a cheap pair of computer speakers or a sound bar. And I think this is a really good idea if you're able to do this at the present time, because the speakers on a laptop or desktop computer, they're average at best. They don't offer a great deal of sound. And in the following video clip, you'll get an example of just what the difference is. For this odd duck, I'm going to talk about computer sound. What you see in front of you is my laptop, and I'm going to show you what it sounds like with the sound turned pretty far up. It's at 78 on my laptop while using the speakers that are built into the laptop. So hang on a second, I'll push play and you can hear what the sound is like. Our first recommended read for this week is a mystery, Murder, Inc. And you can hear it, Betty Hedgeman. but it's not super loud. Veronica Blackstone is a writer for hire. So, Be now I'm going to turn the camera. Biographies, resumes, This is my monitor with a sound bar in front of it. And so I'm going to go forward here a little bit, press the sound bar on. Life. Veronica finds the information surrounding the now, I think you can hear her death. That's louder. To be shrouded. And in on the mystery. top, there's a separate volume no control. No one quite knows what happened. So you can and make it louder still. Her prominent family 
are more concerned with their image than the truth. Was Rachel's life as perfect? So that's, that's my point. The sound is much better if you have external speakers or a sound bar. If you're trying to listen to Zooms or presentations or even just went plain watching movies online and you're using the sound system that came with your computer, in other words, the built-in speakers, you're not going to get as loud a sound, even if you've got it all the way up, as you will if you have a sound bar. Now, the one I've got in front of us here... I went online. I bought this during the holiday season with holiday money. $34.99, six bucks off. You can get cheaper ones. Uh, they tend to, they meaning tech review sites, tend to promote really expensive sound bars over $100, even over 1000 because you can use these with your TV as well, but you don't need to spend that much. You could spend 20 or 30 bucks if you've got it and get a sound bar, or you can just get an external pair of speakers for like $10, $15, and you're going to find that the sound is much louder. So that's my odd duck for this week, and you'll find in the references links to a couple of articles on sound bars and computer speakers. So now a quick odd duck addendum. I want to briefly talk about the equipment used in the video I just showed you, just in case anybody's scratching their head and going, why on earth does she have a monitor separate from her laptop? And is that actually a second computer? The answer to that question is no. I have one computer. It's the laptop I showed you at the beginning of the video. I have a larger monitor plugged into the laptop because I'm in my mid 50s and I like to have a bigger screen so I can more easily see text and graphics. But rest assured that the soundbar that I showed you is plugged into my laptop. The soundbar has rechargeable batteries. Most of them do nowadays, so you can plug them into your laptop and keep them charged. The particular one that I have and that I showed in the video is also Bluetooth enabled. That's fancy computer speak. Uh, that means that it will wirelessly talk to your computer. And I have the soundbar in front of my big monitor, obviously, because I sit in front of my big monitor so I can easily see the screen. So that's part one of the odd duck addendum. Part two is the real soundbar used in the video because I realized after I had processed the video that what I had the camera showing you on the screen was actually not the soundbar I have. It's the one you see there on the screen now. I think it's pronounced SCABOS, S-A-K-O-B-S, computer speakers. It's a 20 watt Bluetooth speaker, which means you can either plug it into your computer and let it recharge and connect, or you can use the Bluetooth to connect it to your computer. So just FYI, this is the soundbar I used, and that's a tidbit about the equipment used in the video. If you have questions, as always, please let me know. And that's enough about Odd Duck. Let's move right on. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Send me an email, and I'll get back to you. My email address is rhymerl at stls.org. That's R-E-I-M as in Mary, E-R-L at stls.org. Currently, the library is open the following hours on Mondays and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we are closed to the public on Wednesdays and Sundays. And that is the end of the new Library Connections content for this week. What follows are a few informational tidbits, and the tidbits include directions as to where you can connect with the library online via our website, catalogs, blogs, and social media pages, links to articles used to create this week's videocast, otherwise known as references, and the library's contact information. First off, the library's website found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of information about the library, our catalogs, services, and calendar of events through our website. The library's appointments page found on the library's website 
Once you arrive at the library's website, you'll find that near the top of any page on our website, it says make an appointment in purple. If you click or tap on that link, you will be redirected to the appointments page where you can make an appointment to use a computer or for curbside pickup. The digital catalog with its companion apps Libby and Overdrive. At the left side of your screen, you see the web version of the digital catalog found at stls.overdrive.com. You can go there and check out ebooks and audiobooks and download them to a computer or send them to an e reader. If you have a mobile device, you can use the Libby or Overdrive app. The reason there are two apps is because Libby is for newer devices. And Overdrive is for older devices and Kindle tablets. Hoopla! Hoopla is a brand new service for Southeast Stabin County library card holders. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. And there is a Hoopla app for mobile devices and for smart TVs, so you can watch TV shows and movies from the library on the big TV in your living room. And the Hoopla app, you see it right, that's what it looks like in mobile app stores. And that's it about Hoopla. The library blogs, full of fun content, and indeed they are. We have several of them, as you can see. There's the Book Club for Adults, which offers one or two postings per month on, you guessed it, the meetings for the book club for adults and information about the monthly reads, the Corning NY history blog, which is our local history blog, Creation Stationery, the Makerspace blog, Story Musings, the SSCL blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, and Tech and Book Talk, which is a bit of tech how-to info and mostly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory items. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic, or want to make an appointment for curbside pickup, or to use a computer, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's telephone number is area code 607-936-3713, and it's the same number we've had for years and years. So if you have an old phone book, you will also find that phone number in it. Social media. You can connect with the library, read library news, and post questions to the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. In relation, each video in this series is available on demand via the library's YouTube channel after it has first been shown on Facebook Live. And subsequently, you can find the videos also on the Tech and Book Talk blog. And page one of our references for this week. And page two of our references for this week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great weekend.